So thanks a lot uh, uh, to everybody for joining uh, this talk and uh, to the organizers for giving the opportunity to speak here. And apologies to the organizers uh, and to you all for changing the title of my talk at the last minute. The topic is still the same, though. So most importantly, I will be uh, speaking uh, about work I have been doing with uh, uh, Tony Padillo in uh, Nottingham. And um, it is about, uh, I know the, uh, the title is not very descriptive, but uh, if uh, uh, there would be a message um, uh, in this talk, that should be possibly uh, this mysterious question mark there. And I'm going to explain what I mean with that. So let me start with a little bit uh, of uh, uh, motivation. So um, theories uh, for dark energy uh, are usually um, treated as effective uh, theories. Uh, we have a theory uh, with some three parameters to study the classical dynamics. And um, we confront them with observations. Uh, and this is uh, uh, the first step in um, uh, understanding uh, the problem. However, uh, it is um, always very important to, uh, to ask the question of whether we can, um, we can say something about the consistency, of most importantly, the initial conditions of uh, uh, dark energy or modified gravity theories, if you like. Uh, from a more fundamental uh, uh, point of view. Um, now, in principle, uh, uh, the non-trivial interactions um, uh, give uh, a found in uh, the, uh, the uh, different dark energy theories give us a uh, very uh, rich structure and dynamics, and particularly the screening mechanism uh, play an important role, um, as I'm going to discuss um, a bit later. Now, I will be talking about theories with derivative interactions. Uh, and these have a very long uh, history, um, in from um, not only in cosmology, but from a particle physics point of view, it has been uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, ways to uh, work out um, approximations for the uh, uh, effective action uh, in scalar field theories have been uh, uh, important uh, tools to understand understanding understanding all end scalar field theories and of course in uh, within cosmology we have k essence Galileans Kordensky uh, and so on and all this uh, uh, possess non-trivial uh, derivative interactions of um, the scalar field now, the question I will be asking is uh, whether we can, I will be focusing mostly to KS, <coughs> on K essence, and I will be asking whether we can say something about the initial conditions um, and, um, let's say, uh, quantum uh, stability for these theories um, uh, with, uh, within and beyond uh, the effective field theory um, framework. Now, the, the tool I will be using is, uh, a powerful tool, the, um, the Wilsonian uh, approach uh, for QFTs. Now, let me introduce the theories uh, very, uh, I will be talking about very briefly. So I will be talking about uh, so-called uh, P of X or K of X theories, K essence theories. So we, they have been um, extremely successful describing dark energy uh, and primordial inflation. Uh, and um, what is nice about, about them is that uh, they possess uh, the so-called uh, Weinstein mechanism, which uh, switches off uh, the uh, free force effects at uh, sufficiently uh, uh, short scales around matter sources. Now, uh, Weinstein mechanism is, uh, if, I'm allowed, if I'm allowed to say an old trick, uh, uh, the, uh, its concept is what under, underlies uh, um, asymptotic freedom in QCD, where when sending a coupling uh, of the gate sector to zero, the kinetic, uh, uh, the kinetic sector of uh, the gate fields pick up, picks up a very large coefficient. And when we're defining 
our gauge fields in a way to canonically normalize the kinetic term, means the gauge interaction switch off and the theory becomes weakly coupled. Now, Weinstein screening relies on derivative, uh, uh, the dominance of derivative uh, interactions. Um, however, it has a very important uh, uh, difference, and this is uh, that uh, the background configuration is crucial here. So, uh, back Weinstein screening occurs for very uh, for uh, configurations where the derivative uh, interactions of the scalar are very uh, important. Now, any stability, any calculation of uh, any quantum analysis, if you like, for this theory, should take into account uh, the uh, the existence of Weinstein screening. And uh, this uh, important question has been asked uh, before in the literature in a very interesting paper by uh, Claudia Deram and Raquel Ribeiro, where uh, it was shown that higher order operators for these theories remain under control for both small and large derivative uh, uh, configurations. Now, this is a very important result because uh, when we're talking about higher order uh, terms in an effective expansion of these theories and uh, in a regime where the derivative interactions are very large, uh, we need to make sure that we don't have some sort of uh, short scale instability, if you like. Now, uh, before I get into uh, uh, our analysis, let me introduce uh, the two I will be uh, using, and that is, as I advertised earlier, the, uh, the Wilsonian framework for uh, QFTs. Now, the, stand, the, uh, the, uh, the starting point to, to understand the uh, uh, quantum uh, dynamics of the theory is usually uh, the path integral. And um, you know, we are given, usually, uh, a bare action. Uh, and we, we need to calculate this horrible integral here, which is, uh, in principle, impossible to calculate. So you usually want to rely on some um, uh, approximation like uh, perturbation theory. Uh, however, in any case, uh, we have either the option of integrating out all fluctuations here at once, or follow the, um, uh, the, um, the powerful idea of uh, Ken Wilson, which says that instead of integrating all fluctuations into ones, it is more intuitive to, uh, to do it successively at different scales. So the Wilsonian approach uh, studies a th suggests to uh, calculate the, uh, the theory starting to understand the theory starting from a, say, a given uh, effective scale in the UV, which depends on the theory, uh, is usually termed as uh, the cutoff of uh, the theory, and start successively integrating out different modes, uh, different uh, high, uh, high frequency modes, down to the infrared, where we reach the stage where we all fluctuations are integrated out. Uh, and we are dealing with the so-called full effective action. Um, now, if, if the theory cannot be extended to arbitrarily high energies, we say that the theory is just an effective field theory uh, defined up to the scale, say, lambda. So k here um, is what I will be calling the sliding renormalization group scale, so it's not really the true cutoff of the theory, but it is the scale at which I define my theory in a Wilsonian uh, sense. Um, now, if I, can, if, I, if I can take the limit of lambda, of, sorry, of k going to infinity, um, then uh, my theory is um, uh, UV-complete. This means that I can take the continuum limit Define the theory at all scales um, beyond the, uh, the standard EFT 
um, uh, approximation. Now, there is unfortunately uh, uh, for scalar field theories, as I'm going to be uh, uh, talking about in a bit, uh, UV completions are uh, pretty uh, troublesome. Uh, however, having a UV completion uh, for a theory is very, uh, in principle, important because it gives us uh, uh, a way of uh, controlling uh, the, uh, the initial conditions for the theory uh, at very high energies. Now, let me discuss uh, a little bit more on the technical side uh, the main tool, the main equation I will be using to uh, implement the Wilsonian idea uh, for my setup. So, um, essentially, uh, in this context, the, uh, the problem of calculating the effective corrections to the bare action, uh, which is uh, uh, translates into calculating the so-called effective action, uh, can be transformed into um, uh, a problem, uh, a differential problem, or uh, if you like, into an uh, integral differential uh, equation. Um, and this is, there are many, there are many equations on the market uh, which suggest different ways of doing that. Uh, uh, I think uh, one of the very first uh, powerful ones was introduced by um, Joe Polchinski. However, here I will be um, talking about the different formulation introduced by Christoph Vetter uh, in the 90s and Timoris uh, uh, independently. And it suggests that one can calculate the flow of the effective action uh, by calculating in one loop uh, type of integral uh, where uh, gamma 2 here is the uh, it's the the uh, uh, the full propagator, um, and when I'm t what I mean by full propagator, I mean the uh, the propagator calculated from uh, the full uh, effective action. Um, so uh, this the, the diagrammatically speaking, this equation um, can represent it in this form. So the flow of the effective action. Sorry, I didn't define that t here is. Uh, um, the logarithm of the uh, sliding normalization group scale. So it can be calculated as by, uh, as, uh, by working out one loop uh, integral with one um, cutoff insertion. So this is a cutoff, uh, a Wilsonian type of cutoff, uh, which suppresses modes, it's, it's defined in a way so that it suppresses all modes uh, less than the scale k squared. So essentially, um, when introduced to the uh, 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 inver in inverse propagator here, or the kinetic, uh, the uh, to the uh, yeah the kinetic uh, to the kinetic part of the effective action is going to. Um, in this, under this trace is going to uh, suppress integrating out all modes below this uh, scale k. So essentially, uh, back to the Wilsonian picture, it allows us to integrate out all fluctuations beyond the scale uh, and have define our effective action uh, at this scale k. Now this, uh, this term there, uh, it's very uh, important as well because uh, it ensures this derivative ensures that uh, the, uh, the trace is localized in momentum space and the grating out of mo uh, modes uh, is implemented shell by shell. Uh, now what we, wh what we end up with is uh, the end result is the flow of the effective couplings given as some action from the UV to down to the infrared. Now, because I will be talking about um, couplings, um, running couplings, uh, uh, and these are very essential for the Wilsonian uh, renormalization group, uh, let me just classify two, uh, the two most important different uh, uh, endpoints uh, for, uh, 
for the, uh, a running coupling, a running coupling. So essentially, we can define two types of fixed points based on whether um, its value is zero, which is the so-called Gaussian fixed point, the theory there is trivial, and the, the, non, the so-called non-trivial fixed points uh, were simply the, um, the uh, it corresponds to no, a non-zero value. Now, the Gaussian fixed point is where we define usually per, uh, it's around the, po the point around which we define uh, perturbation theory. It's the, the, the point around which uh, the theory uh, is weakly coupled. It's a trivial fixed point. Now, if by taking, if uh, if our theory, if we're, when we are taking the the, uh, the UV limit, the uh, the continuum limit, the theory uh, does not possess uh, possesses sorry flows to uh, to a trivial fixed point. Uh, through some interacting relevant directions, then we say the theory is uh, asymptotically free. However, if the theory can flow to a non-trivial fixed point, which corresponds to the uh, Steven Weinberg's generalization of asymptotic freedom, uh, dubbed as asymptotic safety. So the theory in the UV flows to a point where, in this case, where um, uh, that allows the theory to be interacting instead of um, free. Now, if there's no such a point, such a fixed point, uh, uh, along towards which the, the RG flow is attracted to uh, in the UV, uh, we, we say that the theory is trivial. And this is um, uh, a problem, particularly for scalar field theories, because uh, in the simplest approximation of uh, a scalar field theory, which is the so-called local potential approximation, a theory without uh, any higher or the derivative interactions, uh, there has not been found any uh, interaction, any UV fixed point in dimensions higher than four. So the theories, scalar field theories in the local potential approximation have been uh, shown to be um, uh, trivial. Um, and for the P of X theories that I will be considering here, uh, one can consider, one can see as in, a, in an EFT expansion, uh, one can think of essentially X um, as uh, the field and P of X being the potential uh, 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 for the field. Now, lambda here is uh, the, um, the so-called strong coupling scale for uh, the theory. And the question now we're asking is first of all, what can we say in this context about uh, P of X theories? Now, the calculation is relatively uh, straightforward to do, uh, and we are uh, we are interested in showing, calculating the full non-perturbative flow. So this is a non-perturbative calculation uh, for the flow of the effective action for. Uh, the P of X theory. So here we are considering defining the P of X theory as a theory uh, defined at some Wilsonian scale K. So the couplings are al allowed to run. And if we do that, we are able to uh, uh, we are able to essentially we're interested in the uh, deep UV regime where K goes to infinity, uh, or if you like, that co also corresponds to X being sufficiently. Uh, small, and if we do that, we find that um, the theory uh, is trivial in the UV. So there's no any UV fixed point which could define the UV completion for the theory uh, in a no, in a non-trivial way. So uh, it turns out that these theories are trivial, and most importantly, uh, working out the stability of the theory around uh, this. Uh, uh, around the uh, the trivial fixed point, uh, we find that the the, uh, the, tri the 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 eigenvalues are always positive, which means that the trivial fixed point is not attractive. Otherwise, that would be an asymptotically uh, free theory. But now, the fixed point is not attractive. It appears that there's no UV completion, uh, and it's uh, it turns out that this is the case for all powers of x uh, 
for any power of x, one can show that uh, given the, the uh, basic eigenvalue, let's say for the uh, kinetic term, all different eigenvalues are going to uh, differ by uh, the mass dimension of, uh, of x, and they're going to be always positive. Now, the moral is that there's no UV completion for this uh, theory, so now we're asking, well, what happens when we are deep within the Weinstein, where we, we are within the Weinstein radius? Um, so we're interested in calculating the flow of the effective action within the Weinstein radius when the derivatives are sufficiently large. And now we don't have, this is a little tricky because we don't have a small parameter, uh, a small background parameter around which we can expand. So we, we write the, the effective action in this way, we expand around some generic background configuration and forgetting about the technical details, um, which are not calculation is, uh, again, uh, straightforward, but what turns out, calculating the flow of the uh, P of X action under the RG for a general background configuration, the um, within the Weinstein radius, the, uh, the flow organizes nicely as a sum of hypergeometric functions where N is essentially the order of uh, the truncation, the highest power of N. Now, what happens here, so omega naught here parameterizes um, the, um, the background configuration, so this is the effective metric for scalar fluctuations, and we make no assumption about it. We, don't, we, do, we do not make any assumption about, uh, about this form. Now, what turns out to be is that for us omega, us, uh, when we are deep in the Weinstein screening, when we are deep in the Weinstein uh, regime, z is going to take a very large value, and the, um, the flow as omega, as z goes to infinity, if you like, uh, the flow switches off completely. So the function does not run at all. Now, if I, if I would expand for leading order in uh, the background and, and the right-hand side of the flow, it turns out that there are essentially two competing effects. One has to do with the, the value of uh, the truncation order, and the other has to do with uh, the background configuration. So the flow tends to zero for higher powers of uh, the higher the, the, uh, the power of x is, and as well as the um, and uh, also uh, the higher the uh, uh, the values of the, the, um, the derivative interactions. So the moral here is that um, this, results, this result is um, analytic. It holds for any value of p of x. And what it tells us is that sufficiently deep within the Weinstein uh, radius, if we consider the theory to lie in the Weinstein radius, uh, and we want to start uh, looking at the uh, short scale properties of the screen theory, then we run um, into this issue that the theory does not, uh, does not flow. The, 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 uh, the effective action does not flow. And this is a result, of course, we, we, we expect that higher order operators are going to be generated by quantum corrections. And in fact, even for single P of X theories, we generate a power of higher order derivative interactions. And in principle, yes, we should include them from the beginning in our theory. And what it turns out is that this result extends to the general theory, including higher order derivative interactions of this form, where L is some general function. Now, here we find that the theory can, o can only be viewed as an effective field theory. And deep in the Weinstein regime, uh, everything, uh, the action stops uh, flowing. Now, this is going to be my last slide. So the lessons from the non-perturbative Wilsonian approach for these sort of theories tells us that in the deep in the UV, uh, expectations based on simple power can be hold true. So we are dealing with uh, operators we would, uh, which are uh, uh, irrelevant and we expect them to be non-renormalizable. This is confirmed in a non-perturbative way. We don't have an upper, any upper and UV completion that could uh, give us a handle from the um, 
the, uh, the initial conditions for the theory, so you're going to have to treat the theory as an effective field theory. Now, what is the problem? The problem, the most important problem point I would like to make here is that within the Weinstein radius, uh, the um, the um, the freeze of the energy flow can be worrisome because the theory has a strong sensitivity on its initial conditions. So there are no interactions that can flow the theory down to the infrared. So I have uh, this strong sensitivity on, on initial conditions could be something to worry about. Uh, and this is very generic for this, uh, uh, for, for uh, uh, the general theory, this general theory with higher order uh, derivatives. Now, uh, I will leave you with my summary and thanks. Thank you. Uh, questions? Sorry for giving you a bit of hard time, but uh, I think, uh, as we know from, for example, books of Wall, there is no proper Euclidization, no proper analytical continuation of any dynamical metric uh, into Euclidean. Uh, these systems have actually dynamical metric, which is more complicated than the normal GR. And uh, therefore, the whole Euclidean approach, one could try to define the theory from Euclidean. But then there is no unique analytical continuation into Minkowski. And right. And it's one thing. Second thing, of course, because it's non-economical field theory, you would need to really use uh, proper measure to say, uh, to make really strong statements, because this path integral is not one to mechanical one, right. as we discussed, right? So these are two two principal obstacles there. In the, the problem is that it's very hard to write, but it's very hard to make Exactly. Statements beyond perturbation right. theory with, I mean, with canonical, in a canonical context, I don't know how you can uh, do any non perturbative statement. That's, of course, look, we Of course, I agree that this is some limitations. Uh, exactly. I agree that this is uh, all Euclidean. Yeah. I mean, the, the scalar, f the okay, please and go. By the way, is this running, so when you're writing these separators which depend on boxes, uh, they are normal boxes in, in Minkowski sense, or whatever, Laplacians. Is it Euclidean? Euclidean Laplacians. So they are not with respect to this acoustic metric, right? Or whatever. No, 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 no. They are uh, built out of, um, it's, yeah, the standard. Uh, uh -huh. So basically, there we assume kind of Lorentz uh, symmetric yes. structure of vacuum. which yes. may not be there in most of the series, actually. Or uh, most interesting cases, actually. Yeah, we haven't looked at that. And in any case, you're going to have uh, I mean, I think quantum corrections are going to shift uh, shift you from any true vacuum. Uh, yeah, you generate all all these sort of tadpole terms that mm -hmm. are going to. Um, okay, I think we have a lot of things to do in Prague. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, uh, just I was thinking another thing to do. Um, so, so certainly these P of X models, you, you can partially UV complete by writing it as like a multi-field system in which you've integrated out one of the fields. Oh, I see. With the virtue of which is that then the action is a sort of standard two derivative thing without higher stuff. So then you could just follow the more traditional like local potential approximation with the only different being that there's a kind of field space dependent metric. Ah. It might be quite interesting to do that case as well because ah. it's probably easier to do than you know, the full, then the P of X, as it were. I see. Um. <coughs> yeah. Any more questions? Any more questions? Well, I, I think drawing any, any conclusions actually on uh, based on running towards EV in effective series, this is kind of very, very risky because, uh, you know, in FTs, I mean, this is an approach is well defined when you go from high energies to low energies. When you go to uh, higher energies, I mean, things depend a lot on what 
I mean, what you have at this higher end is you can have new degrees of freedom, you can have many sure, things. Sure, sure, so sure. Here you, you didn't include that. Well, you commanded yourself that you have to include higher derivative operators with more yes. derivatives. And then, you know, the, the system of equations goes out, uh, out of control. So in, in fact, well, I know one example where the Gauss condensate can be completed to something which is be, I mean, this P of X can be resolved. Non-perturbatively. Well, perturbatively, why? Just by integrating in additional degrees of freedom. In the Lorentz violating context, though, but uh, I think your argument did not really use Lorentz invariance so much. So in this sense, yeah, I, I, I don't quite understand the, the, con the conclusion. Uh, what kind of conclusions can be drawn from, from this kind of analysis? Well, the, uh, first, uh, I would say that the main message here is that uh, deep within the Weinstein screening, so essentially you expect that Weinstein uh, switches off in directions, right? Now, yeah. what turns out is that uh, if you look at the, the RG flow, you, are freeze, you, you freeze at its initial condition sufficiently deep in, in the, uh, yeah, in the Weinstein screening. Yeah, but and I you, think that's not you expect your theory to be Weinstein screened, right? It's sufficiently yeah. small. But scale. I don't think this is the relevant question. The relevant question would be what happens with the additional degrees of freedom, putative degrees of freedom that are supposed to if you complete the theory. I mean, yes. and how they react to Weinstein uh, mechanism, we, we don't, I mean, yes. I don't think this analysis gives any idea uh, about that. Yes. Yes, we haven't looked at an adi any additional degrees of freedom here. No, it is just an approximation that we're making that the right. theory is described by. Uh, yeah, but in effective the series, in general, like, uh, yeah, in effective series, the, uh, with derivative self interactions, the RG flow freezes out I mean, at the low energies. Like, if you take chiral theory, I mean, all, all the interactions or Galston series of Galstons, all interactions are derivative, contain derivatives, so they are irrelevant at low energies. So, okay, it freezes out, but so, so what? It's not a problem. Sure. Um, uh, but, but he, well, that's right. But this happens at sufficiently low energies, right? Yeah. So I'm talking about very, uh, what I'm talking about is su at sufficiently uh, large energy, right? So essentially the flow freezes deep within the Weinstein screening, right? The Weinstein radius, you're going to be uh, um, frozen at the initial, the UV, your UV initial condition. Yeah, you are sensitive to UV. I agree, you, are, you will be sensitive to the, the resolution of uh, of the series, the completion of the series. So there are no inter there are no interactions that can drive you down to the infrared. Uh, yeah, but it's okay. I mean, depends uh, depends on what this physics is. Maybe it's totally fine to not to have any you know, additional running. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I mean, sometimes it's it's a good thing uh, to have. Uh, I mean, if you're worried about symmetries and all that, but I guess. Um, in this case, I'm not sure. I'm not saying that this is in any way destructive. I'm not claiming that. I'm saying that this is worrisome. It seems to me that uh, um, this is this strong sensitivity on the initial conditions would be something to think about. I don't know. Maybe. Can thank you. Can, con can continue over co coffee. So, uh, thank you again. <laughs> and. Uh,